All right, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, Mike Lewis here with Patrick Rafter from Rafter Communications. We've known each other for a while, but so I'm not going to introduce you, but I'll let you introduce yourself. How about that? Uh, thank you very much, Mike. First of all, I'm really excited to be here at the summit. Um, it's a great event. Uh, lots and lots of things going on. I've met a lot of people already. There's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of uh, good energy going on. Um, basically, I'm a, I'm a PR guy. I've been a PR guy for a long time. And what's sort of interesting is that used to mean media relations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the irony is that increasingly PR is not just about interacting with media, but with all of the publics that an organization wants mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. get involved with. And I think that the big change that has happened within the last two or three years essentially is that it used to be a process where stories were being pushed down the throats of journalists, mm -hmm. which they didn't like and really didn't result in really good coverage. And PR guys didn't like it either. PR guys didn't like it either. Um, but I think what's really important now is that um, through the new media that are available, which will allow an interactivity um, and a dialogue to happen, but essentially what's happening is that there's a much stronger discourse mm -hmm. ma being made possible. Absolutely. So what's interesting is, I've heard a lot of people say this, is that there's a blurring now between PR and regular marketing. And I wonder if you're seeing that, that line blur a little bit more. Yeah, so, so what's sort of interesting is that it used to be that the tools, uh, the uh, the cost, the barriers of entry were very high to participate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would have to say that much in the same way that whereas publishing used to be part of the privileged few mm -hmm. who could afford to own a printing press, mm -hmm. those are the people who had the power of the press. Yeah. Now with citizen journalists and blogs and all the other things, people are suddenly, they're involved and they're actually media themselves. So at the same time, what is happening is that communicators who are PR people, mm -hmm. um, are still very much involved in the process, but it's not d doing the conventional techniques that were done in years past, simply because of the quantity, Absolutely. the enormous quantity of information. Absolutely. And the question that I find is sort of, whether it's marketing or PR, there's still one big dilemma, which is how do you separate out the quality from the enormity of the noise. No, that's a great point. It's actually a great lead into my next question because Paul Gillen, who's here, wrote a great book called The New Influencers. Spectacular book, I love it. Unbelievable book. And so my question to you is, as someone in PR, how do you hit the right influencers? How do you make sure that you're finding the right people? I mean, how do you even start that process? Because you're right, it's a huge world. I mean, there's millions upon millions of blogs out there. How do you find the right people to go after? Sure. So um, what's interesting is that whether it's marketing or PR, it's all about relevance and personal relevance. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that I'm often amused by is some people who haven't necessarily been working in PR for very long is that they might just send a story to a journalist having never read anything that that yeah, person right. has ever written or right. if, right. They're, if they're blogging or video blogging having never watched a program that they've created. And if you do that, you're basically handicapping yourself because it's completely irrelevant. And, yeah, and I think that increasing what is important is that we're finding is that we're, we're shifting from mass media mm -hmm. in which there was a lot of information for a lot of general interest for a lot of people down to very discreet niche messaging mm -hmm. which is relevant and so what we're having have what is essentially happening at the same time is that people are keeping track about those issues and those subject materials that are very very relevant it could be in incredibly obscure yep. but the fact is that there are a lot of people out there who really care about that one little thing industrial abrasives in Botswana <laughs> There's got to be a blog out there. there. there There's there, someone out there. Is there is definitely an industrial abrasives blog for just Botswana. Exactly. <laughs> Somewhere out there. So, and, and, and so, so the issue would be, uh, you want, don't want to pitch the guy uh, or whoever it is who runs that blog about uh, industrial abrasives about something that is not relevant to them. It's more an issue of uh, paying attention to what that person is writing about. So people are using things like Twitter, yep. people are doing things like generally visiting and, and getting RSS feeds to individual blogs, tracking those people. Now, there is one thing that sort of concerns me, again, which is that how does one differentiate mm -hmm. the more influential bloggers mm -hmm. from the millions, literally now millions of people and, and who are doing it. influential, you mean by influential within different market spaces or different audiences, right? That, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. So in the past, what was interesting in the ancient old days of old media, which used to mean print, yep. um, there were certain media brands that were associated with quality, reliability, mm -hmm reportorial ex expertise and quality. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is that those old brands kind of exist still, yep. um, although many of them are quite challenged by the, the economics of, of producing 
quality journalism in, in the new me media world. Mm -hmm. So what I think is sort of interesting, and there's the old adage that we're drowning information, yeah. but we're starved for knowledge. Interesting. So I, 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 I think um, it's, it's a really interesting time that people are going through. Um, my, <laughs> phone, my phone rang in the middle of the whole thing, you know. Is somebody somebody wants me right now, let's see, I don't know who it is. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Um, it's the always on world, you know. Yeah, exactly. You're always connected. You can't get away from it. So if there's one tip that you could give to someone who's looking to target the right bloggers, target the right new influencer, let's call them, sure. what would it be? Well, so one of the interesting things is that I would say if the bloggers don't want to be pitched. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so hard to find out what the contact information is. Absolutely. In the, in the old, again, in, in conventional media or even websites of conventional uh, websites, uh, uh, let's just say magazines, as yep. they used to be yeah. called, yeah. Um, you could go and you could find out who is writing about what subjects on there because there's something the masthead would give the information. Sure. Now, what's interesting is in many cases in blogs, you have to kind of ferret through the whole website to find out who that person is. And I, the, the, the suggestion that I would make is if you really want to create a relationship with that person, it's got to be a relationship based on trust yep. and dialogue and what I call mutual advantage. And a mutual advantage sounds like an oxymoron, but <laughs> what's in it for that person who's trying to contact? And it, gone are the days when marketing is all about spamming something down someone's throat. Yep. It's more about uh, creating a relationship. A it's about a dialogue in which in your process by potentially reading one of the comments that a blogger has written about, posting a comment that shows that you're not an idiot, and yeah, right. if, if it shows that you have domain expertise and are relatively current about that particular subject, they might remember you. And so it's kind of interesting what may ha happen in that case is that as opposed to you approaching them, that blogger may come to you because they found that you are proving that you are a reliable source or an yeah. interesting, well-informed person. And so it goes back to the same thing that I've heard now over and over. It's like the same theme that you hear throughout the day, that listening and dialogue is still key to creating relationships and new marketing. Uh, it, it has always been. It has I think it's been. even yeah. more an important thing today just because of the sheer quantity mm -hmm. of stimuli and input mm -hmm. things that we have. Absolutely. I mean, how do you keep track of it all? Yeah, it's, it's next to impossible, but that's why we have guys like you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank I you very much. It. Always a pleasure. Yeah, same here. Thanks same for having here. me by today. Thanks, everyone.